Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to model the organic flash cycle from scratch. I decided to do this video because I got an email from one of my subscribers to do a video on organic flash cycle. The organic flash cycle is a vapor power cycle proposed in 2012 by Tony Hall et al. as a modification to the organic Rankine cycle. In the organic Rankine cycle and most vapor power cycles, the heat addition occurs in a single phase stream at constant evaporation temperature, which could be susceptible to irreversibility as a result of the heat exchange between the heat source and the organic fluid stream. Whereas the organic flash cycle is proposed to have the heat addition occur with the working fluid in liquid state before being flash evaporated to produce a two-phase mixture and the saturated vapor will be separated and expanded to produce power. And there are several types of the organic flash cycle. So you have the single flash double expander, the double flash double expander, the single flash single expander and the double flash double expander. But for today's tutorial, we are working with the single flash single expander. So here is the diagram of the single flash single expander. This diagram, I got it from the works of Bassioli and Antonelli have provided references to their work in the description below this video. So I decided to use this so to save me the time of making a fresh drawing. So let's quickly look at the system description and the TS diagram. So over here, the heat source temperature comes in into the heat exchanger. So this heat source could be from um, low temperature heat source and leaves the heat exchanger at a particular temperature. And in here is the pump. So let's say that the fluid leaves the condenser as saturated liquid and the working fluid pressure is raised by the pump to the required heat exchanger pressure. The fluid is then heated up in here to the saturated liquid at a specified temperature and then the liquid maintains phase from the heat exchanger. The fluid is then throttled to evaporation pressure corresponding to the saturation pressure of the evaporation temperature. The saturated vapor in the flash evaporator is then expanded in the turbine to the condenser pressure, while the saturated liquid in the flash evaporator is throttled to the condenser pressure. And over here, both fluid mixes together in the mixer before the organic working fluid enters the condenser again. And here is the TS diagram of that process. So this yellow line here is the heat source temperature coming in. And here is the, the pump, which raises the pressure to the same pressure here. And here at point three, we see that the evaporation pressure and temperature at which the saturated liquid fluid enters to point three. And at point six, we see that is in a liquid phase saturation liquid phase and here is in a vapor phase and here is in its gaseous phase because it's superheated and and then 
it is throttled to the condenser pressure and temperature and at point eight is where the mixture takes place and the process continues. Let me make this font size a bit bigger. Okay, so to start up the model, we need to first set up our assumptions. And from the assumptions, we could now start running the model for each point. Again, back here, this is point one, this is point two, this is point three, point four, point five, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, and 0.9, which is also represented in the TS diagram. So let's write our assumptions. Let's see. Let me make it bigger. So I will just skip this part of the video and then provide all the assumptions. So over here, I've provided the assumptions that we are going to be working with during the model. So we've assumed that the temperature leaving this heat exchanger is 408 Kelvin, which is about 135 degree C. And then we've assumed that the turbine efficiency is 0 0.9, which is a fraction of percent. And the pump efficiency is 0 0.8, which is also a fraction of percent. And then we've also assumed that the evaporator temperature, the flash evaporator temperature is 353 Kelvin, which is 80 degrees C. And then we've also assumed that the condenser temperature is 40 degrees C, which is 313 Kelvin. And one of our final assumption we made here is that the mass flow flowing in this circuit is, at the initial point here, is one kilogram per second. So if you notice here, I have not represented this heat input calculations and the output and same for the condenser. Um, so I'm just ignoring that. However, I could just specify a relationship here for you to calculate that. So over here, I've provided the calculations, the formulas that we're going to be using to calculate the turbine work, the pump work, the network, the heat input, and the cycle efficiency. So I could just provide that. Say, assuming you know what the heat source temperature is that is coming in, and you know what the mass flow is that is coming in, and you know what the pinch is, the pinch temperature is, then um, we could create a relationship for what is happening in between the heat exchanger and also for the heat and condenser. So to show the relationship, I would just specify it here and say um, the mass flow of the, of the heat source multiplied by Cp of the working fluid from the heat source times the temperature difference between HTF, HTF underscore in minus HTF underscore out will be equal to the mass flow of the MS underscore F times the enthalpy underscore two minus H underscore one. Similarly, for the condenser, we'll have the mass flow of the condenser of the coolant let me use that word coolant times or multiply by let me copy this and paste it and then change the values multiply by cp of the coolant times called is the coolant t exit minus the coolant t underscore n is equal to So here I've used energy balance to represent this heat exchange and heat transfer occurring here for both the heat exchanger and for the condenser, just for your own use. I, I'm not going to use it, but um, so you just be aware if you have all those information given to you, and then you could work with this equation. So we'll just quickly start up with um, getting each of those points the thermodynamic properties and then we can run the performance calculation I'll just enter these and go back to code okay so let's start with point two let's start with um, 
point two somewhere here. So at point two, we know the T two to be underscore two to be four eight, but we don't know what the pressure is. So we can find the pressure at point two. So at point two, we understand that the fluid is still leaving the heat exchanger in its saturated liquid phase. So we could find the pressure since we know that at saturated liquid phase, the quality of the fluid will be zero. Again, for the thermodynamic fluid properties, I'm using cool prop. If you're not aware of cool prop, I have provided a link to my previous videos on how to install CoolProp in MATLAB, in Excel, or in Python. So depending on what modeling tool you're using, you can replicate the same process in that modeling tool. So P2 becomes, let's call it, so I'll call the fluid property uh, SAM. Into so we're looking for our pressure. So we need to specify what we're looking for. Pressure. We know the temperature. And then we specify the temperature to be T underscore 2. And then we know the quality of the fluid to be 0. Okay, one thing I missed in this assumption. I didn't specify the working fluid that we are using. So for this model or this performance modeling, we are using, so let me specify it here. So the working fluid is isopentane, which is also represented as RO 601A, I guess. So this is the IUPAC name. So we can specify that here now to be isopentane. Next we can find the enthalpy at that point. So what I'll do here is I would um, go in and let's call the enthalpy to be h underscore 2 which is equals. So let me copy this because it's still going to be at the same condition. I paste it here. So because we're looking for enthalpy I'll change this to h and then we have the same condition, temperature, and the quality of the fluid is this. Then we can also look for the entropy at that point. So we call entropy to be x underscore 2. Again, I copy and paste. And then I change this to s. And then we could go ahead and look for the density of the fluid. So let's make sure we have all the parameters we could potentially use for, for that. Again, I paste and then I change this for D for density. So let's quickly specify our units. So this units will be in Kelvin. So this will be in Kelvin. This unit is in, is in Pascal. This unit is in joule per kilogram, and this one will be joule per kilogram per Kelvin, and the density will be kilogram, sorry, kilogram per meter cube. So we now know all our values at point two at this point. 